Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I heard Yuval Noah Harari in a video clip say that governments like to use fear to control people. And he used the example of terror. And he said, you know, terror actually only kills very few people in the world. And the thing we should really be worried about is climate change. We all have to unite around the government and anybody who opposes that or criticizes the government is a traitor. Why put our kids in the poorhouse over climate emergency fake news? She claims there's a climate emergency, but that's not what scientists say. Well, that's ridiculous. And governments shouldn't be using climate change as a fear-mongering device to control people. But that's what they've been doing. So I would recommend that Mar Harari speak with Nir Shaviv. Professor Nir Shaviv is at the Uni Hebrew University in Jerusalem, and he can explain to him how the sun drives climate, how the ocean cycles affect climate, and uh, how we're not in control of climate. We contribute to it, but our contribution is not catastrophic. You can find an astrophysicist working in climate change is because uh, it, it turns out that uh, climate uh, is affected by things which are uh, outside the atmosphere. The evidence is there that the sun has a large effect on climate, uh, but it is uh, mostly ignored. And you can look at the historical record, especially in the Middle East, and you can see that there are periods of warm and cold, of drought and of dust cycles that affect that part of the world in particular. And these are cyclical patterns. They're obviously connected to internal variability of the Earth and external variability of the Sun and the planets. And um, we don't understand all of it. So it is important that we continue doing climate science research. And we should understand more about how humans affect climate. But there's no need to feel that there's a climate emergency and governments must stop using that as a way to instill fear in people and control them. And you only have to look at what's happened with the World Economic Forum and lockdowns. The World Economic Forum is the only organization in the world that celebrated lockdowns. They said that lockdowns were improving cities. They shamelessly said this when people's lives were being ruined, when people were dying for lack of treatment in time, when people were dying from overdoses, when people committed suicide because their lives had been destroyed, when small businesses lost everything, many people including their home, because they'd used their home as a means to finance their small business, and usually small business people, that's their passion in life. They love what they do. And uh, so it was disgusting to see the World Economic Forum celebrating lockdowns and saying that we should do more of them because emissions were reduced in the world. Well, if you actually do the math, you find that uh, only 12 hundredths of a parts per million reduction in greenhouse gas emissions occurred during the COVID lockdowns. And that was eclipsed by the natural variation of carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere. So climate lockdowns won't stop climate change. And in fact, it's ludicrous to even think that way in the first place because carbon dioxide is not the main driver of climate change. So I invite people to look at the historical record. Whether you look in the Tanakh and you see everything from Noah's flood to uh, Joseph and the uh, fat and thin cows and the famine in Egypt, or whether you look at the historical, archaeological, geological record and see these cycles of, of dust and drought and rain, um, or whether you look at the work on solar variations of Dr. Shaviv, or whether you look at the library of work of the scientists who are signatory to the Clintel organization out of Holland. Over a thousand scientists and scholars who say that there's no climate emergency and that nature is more influential than humans. 
and that we should have common sense, practical solutions for adapting to climate change. Because it's true, climate change can kill min millions of people. But we can't control that. The only thing we can control is how we adapt to it and what kind of energy systems we have to respond to it. And that's what we should be focusing on. We shouldn't be sending trillions of dollars and carbon tax money to green grifters, green crony capitalists, and green billionaires. So, I don't know what gravy train Mao Harari might be on. I don't know if it's his understanding of contemporary climate change that we are the sole factors driving it. That's what climate activists like to say. But it's simply not true. So I recommend that he, as an influential person, as an advisor to the World Economic Forum, have a look at the natural cycles of climate change. And I also hope that citizens of the world will not consider useless eaters as a cause of climate change, because that's another very concerning aspect of what he's had to say in public, that you know, people who simply take up resources whose work can be done by artificial intelligence or by robots, or people who can't do much of, of anything because they're disabled, that these useless eaters um, are simply taking up resources. This is a disgusting view of life. This is the view of life that was prevalent before the Shoah, before the Holocaust in Germany, before the Shoah. Eugenics and euthanasia were public policy to get rid of useless eaters. And you can read all about it in the horrific book that's very well documented called Death and Deliverance. We should not go down this path. We should not even think this way. So climate change is not driven by human beings. It's not driven by carbon dioxide concentration. There's no empirical evidence showing that carbon dioxide drives climate change. There is some contribution by humans to climate change, but we're not the only driving force. And these concepts of eugenics and depopulation must not be part of our conversation about how we build back better. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.